Ladies and gentlemen, today we have ourselves a game between Joke and John Beast. Now, I removed all of the audio, so I'm sure they're going to upload their version. I just wanted to go on ahead and give a commentary on what I think is the... Well, it's, it's labeled as the greatest upset in MCS history. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, John DeBeast is a... Is a very John Beast is a you know fairly new player on the scene, only 18 years old, very young, uh, from my hometown of Connecticut. And then you have Joke, arguably the greatest football, well Madden player, I should say, um, in in the history of uh, you know Madden competitions. Like the guy is absolutely insane. Uh, last year's belt winner, he won his club for the fourth time in a row. He won the the Browns club, and he was able to beat. Um, JS the best, I think his name was in the first round to make it to the second round where he's facing John Beast, who was able to overtake, um, K Mac and overwhelmingly the favorite is joke. Now, rightfully so now not putting, you know, John Beast down as a player, obviously he's a goon. That's why he's here, but you're going up against the reigning defending champion, the four time Cleveland club winner. One of the most, uh, like he's one, he's top up there with the amount of money that he's been able to win as, uh, you know, he's probably like top five on the amount of money he was able to win. You take a look over $240,000 he's been able to win uh, playing Madden. And uh, he's my favorite pro player, so I'm definitely biased. You know, I was watching this game uh, very, very, very close. Now, because... This is labeled as the greatest upset in the history of, you know, uh, Madden competition. You already know the outcome and what's going to happen. But it was such a phenomenal game. Some mistakes as a watcher. It's very tough to pinpoint mistakes when you're there. You're playing the game. It's very easy for us to sit back watching. Like, oh, he should have did this. He should have did that. But, you know, starting out the gate, Joke is going to come out on offense, right? Now, Joke last year was ridiculed for winning with a punter at defense. I mean, at QB, excuse me, a punter at QB. So uh, he didn't pass the ball pretty much at all last year. He won with just top-notch defense, and he won just by running the ball. <clears throat> so right here is something I would like to already think was a mistake. After a big run, second and three, he comes out and he decides to pass the ball. Now, nothing wrong with Joke as a passer, but that's just not his game plan, you know. Um, and he immediately gets rushed right outside, and he goes on ahead, and he throws the ball away in the pocket, he gets an intentional grounding. I didn't like that play call whatsoever. I really feel like second and three, you run the ball again, you put the pressure on him, you pick up the first down, you get, you get a fresh batch of downs, and then you potentially try and pass the ball or something like that. But I don't like the call on second and three, and now he's looking at a third and long when he was just a few yards away from a first down. Now, if you are defending against Joke, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will tell you if he's passing the ball, that's where you want to be. You want to get him to pass the ball, right? Because he's not primarily that good of a passer. He's no young kid. You know, he's he's not, you know, these guys that come out here and going to pass the ball 20 times and, and scorch you over the top. That's just not his game. His game is phenomenal defense, arguably the best. And just keeping the ball on the ground, playing safe and relying on that defense, flipping field position, putting the pressure on you, having long drives, frustrating you and taking over the game that way. So his very first drive, didn't like it. Did not like it whatsoever. Did not like that he came out and passed the ball on that second down. Really feel like that was a mistake. Now, John Beast is going to go on ahead and come off of a victory over k where he himself deemed himself as struggling immensely on offense. His defense was very good. I think he forced about two to four picks or something like that against k -Mac. And, you know, K-Mac is someone who is a very, very, very heavy passer. And John B's offense just, it, it struggled, but his defense held him down. <coughs> his defense came through. His defense was phenomenal. And his defense put him in situations that, you know, allowed him to win that game. So now John B comes out on offense. And now he has to deal <coughs> with arguably the best defensive player in the game, which can be very, very, very difficult 
to deal with because Joke, again, is a very heavy defensive guy. He prides himself on his defense, his offense. He wants to have just enough offense, but he's going to win the game by shutting you down. Again, keeping the ball on the ground, clock management, and, you know, having you struggle moving the ball. Now, John Beeks has playmaker on his Deion Sanders. And as you see on the left drag, he playmaker on the back to the right. And that's what he was doing a good, good majority of the time against K-Mac. Now, when you have that playmaker ability, and if you guys watch my videos, you guys know I love playmaker ability. It's very, very strong. Very, very, very strong. But Joke is going to try his best to take that away and force him to look elsewhere because he knows that that's where he wants to go. He wants to go for that playmaker. Now, right there, he doesn't playmaker him back. He doesn't playmaker him up. He just decides to flat out throw it straight to him and um, without any playmaker or anything like that. And he is going to go on ahead and pick up the first down. So um, already picking up a first down, you know, getting closer to flipping field position, which is, you know, definitely something against a player of Joke's caliber you want to be able to do. Even if you don't score, that first down is big because if you punt the ball, you're giving him a long field to drive. And again, he's not that he's not known as a heavy offensive player. So giving him a long field to work with is the situation you want to put your defense in. So big play right there, big stop by Joke already, uh, you know, already thinking of his adjustments on what it is he's going to do. He decides to run the ball right here on second down, and he just gets absolutely muddled up there right up the middle, and he's going to face a, a now third and long. And again, Joke's defense is just very, 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 very difficult to have a lot of success against. I'm not saying it's impossible, but to be consistent against someone of his caliber can be difficult. You know, you can probably get some plays off here and there, but for the most part, he's going to make it very, very, very difficult for you, which is why, uh, you know, him being able to score about 10 is where Joke usually wants to be, 10, 13, somewhere around there, because his defense is just uh, usually going to be the reason why he wins, not usually his offense. Again, he won a belt last year without, a, I think he attempted the lowest amount of passes in like an MCS run history, you know, and on a, on a big third and long, you could tell John beast was pretty much conceding the drive, just looking to run the ball there. And a lot of Madden players will find themselves in that situation where they're just going to go on ahead, just run the ball. You know, if I get one or two, it's whatever, you know, I don't want to get sacked and, you know, force a fourth and 20 or something like that. I don't feel comfortable being able to pick up 15 yards here. We'll just run the ball. And it just so happens to work out. He breaks the big run and he gets the first down and now he's inching his way closer to field goal range and then he snaps the throw over there to the right side and after that completion, he is now in field goal range. You go on ahead and you take a look at his adjustments. I believe he went to conservative. Now that right there is going to pretty much make it almost impossible for you to fumble. Now your quarterback will fumble on conservative, but your running backs, your wide outs, your tight ends, all those guys, they're pretty much never going to fumble on conservative. Now, when you do that, though, you limit the ability to do any type of skill maneuvers. You can't spin. You can't juke. You can't stiff arm. You can't truck. You can't do anything like that. But you ensure that you're pretty much not going to fumble. So uh, he's already knowing this is going to be a very tough game. He's probably not going to be able to put up 30 against Joe because not too many people can. But this is a big three. I got myself in field goal range. We're going to put the pressure on the defensive guy to now need some offense to put on the board. So right there, he scoots up. He ends up getting sacked right here. And again, he knows the significance of this three. Now, of course, he would like to get the first down. He would like to continue driving. By no means is he willing to just settle for three. He wants the seven, but he knows he's in field goal range here. So he wants to go on ahead and you know, make sure he had, at least gets to three. But if he can put up seven and get ball at half, he is now in great, great, great shape again because if you want Joke in a position, you much rather have him needing a score against you to win the game than you needing to score against him to win the game. You know, you'd much rather be on, on defense against his offense than your offense against his defense. You know, very frustrating, but it's elite. You know, he, he did a good job of being able to get three. Now, they are playing in ultimate team, right? So that right there allows you to pretty much, you have to send in your lineups. But one thing that I noticed and one thing that I thought 
was going to cost him the game, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is that he has Sebastian Janikowski as his kicker. Now, Sebastian Janikowski is the second highest kick power kicker in the game. I believe he has 92. At 94, we have Tyler Bass. Now, Tyler Bass is a kicker, again, with 94 kick power, and with no wind, he can kick from the 40-yard line. Now, this is a dome. There's no wind. So they're able to, Tyler Bass can kick from the 40, whereas Janikowski needs to be at about the 38, I believe is his max. And that's going to play some significance a little later on, which I thought was a mistake by John Beast by not going into these games without the best kicker. I really feel like it's a huge advantage by getting the best kicker on your team because, you know, it allows you to obviously take three and kick your field goals from further. So now Joke is down 3-0, and now he's back again on offense. And this was primarily his offense right here. He loves to run a lot of RPOs, a lot of stretch RPOs, a lot of dive RPOs. He'll audible from, what was it, uh, Trips Tight? Yeah, right here. Well, not Trips Tight. Uh, <coughs> he's going to audible right here from Gun Trips to his uh, under center formation. And from there, he'll audible to either a, or he'll pass out of here as well. But, you know, he was doing a lot of audibles, you know, trying to keep the defense off guard and whatnot. So now right here, you're going to see, I believe he hits a dot to the crossing slant. By no means does it mean that Joe can't, uh, you know, get get wild out there offensively. That's just not what he's known for. You know, he can definitely make some plays happen. You do not, con you're, you're not considered the greatest player in the world if you <coughs> if you can't pass the ball. You know, you, you're just, you know, not there. Only problem was last year is that, you know, he didn't need to pass. But if he needed to, if he absolutely needed to, then I'm sure he's more than capable of being able to move the ball, you know, offensively through the year. Just, again, not as consistent as other players that are primarily, you know, air guys like Skimbo, like Kiv, like K-Mac, and guys like that that aired out a ton. So, He's inching closer to field goal range, and because he, <coughs> excuse me, because he has Tyler Bass, he only needs to make it to the 40-yard line to then be in field goal range for him to be able to tie this game up. Now, John Beast does get the ball at the half, so, you know, if I'm joke, I'm thinking, all right, I want to try and take as much time off of this clock as possible. Don't want to try and rush to give him the ball back and be in a hurry right here. Nothing's really open. Good pocket presence. He's going to roll out to the right where he's just going to go in ahead and throw the ball away. So now we are looking at a big third and nine. And again, these are the type of situations you want to find yourself against Joe because these are the type of situations where he himself is probably not too comfortable in because he is a very, very safe offensive guy. But the man got dots. <laughs> So, again, he will pass if he needs to. So, right here, again, back to Trips tight end. He's going to go in ahead and motion over. Defense, <coughs> excuse me, offense is going to go in ahead and call himself, call a timeout. So, he now has no more timeouts remaining. So, again, back to Trips tight end. He's going to go in ahead and motion over. It's a uh, left slot to the right. He's going to go in ahead and then hike the ball here. And he's going to try to... Get something going here. Rolls out to the right side. Plenty of time. And then he finds a scorcher on the left side for the possession catch. And that right there was absolutely monstrous. I'm watching this and I'm going wild watching this live. Again, because he's my favorite pro player and I absolutely uh, love watching him play. And that right there just came out of nowhere. The A receiver wasn't even on the screen. And just as pressure was about to get to his Gannon, he just leaks off the left side, just gets into the picture frame, and then Joke is able to find him downfield for a huge, 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 huge play. So not only does that allow him to now, at worst, tie the game up, he is that right there is a huge, huge tackle. He is now able to take more time off of the clock and keep the ball away from John Beast and hopefully able to take a 7-3 lead. So that right there was a huge run. Right, got very, very close to, to a touchdown. He runs the ball again, and he gets tackled at the one-yard line. Now, this right here is a very big predicament where is if he gets stopped here, does he go for it? Second and go, he's going to run the ball, and he gets absolutely smothered by the user. An incredible play by John Beast to shoot the gap, catch him in the backfield, 
and now force a much tougher situation on the goal line where he's now at the four instead of the one. He's now going to audible, and he's going to look to keep the ball on the ground again. Doesn't want to make any mistakes. He definitely wants this seven, but he wants to keep it safe. He, he doesn't want to make any mistakes here. He wants to, at worst, take his three to tie the game, but he definitely feels confident that he can go on ahead and potentially get seven out of this. So he's going to go on ahead, flip the play, <coughs> throw some fake audibles out there. It's going to motion to the left. It's going to hike the ball, and I feel like he had a nice up cut through the B-gap, but instead he decided to take it outside. I really feel if he just went straight up and kind of just took that into a dive instead of all the way outside. I feel like he scores there, but he tried to hit the outside. It failed, but he goes on ahead and he ties the game. Again, putting the pressure back on Beast. Now, you no longer have the lead. I'm no longer playing catch-up. You now have to score on me where I know you're not too comfortable doing. This is where I want to be. I want the game to look at the A receiver on the left. You don't see him. Now he comes in the picture. <coughs> and now Joke goes on ahead and throws a hot one. Like an absolute incredible, absolute incredible play right there for him to go on ahead and throw that right there. So uh, just the split second, he was able to come in the picture frame and for him to just dial it up right there is an incredible play. So here goes John Beast right here. He's in shotgun bunch. And a joke again back on defense here. He definitely mixes up his coverages. He'll mix up being able to send a lot, send a little, you know, have multiple guys in coverage, have minimal coverage. Does a pretty good job of being able to, you know, mix things up. And right there, he goes to his playmaker, Deion Sanders. And playmaker is just, it's absolutely disgusting. It's so good. It's so, so, so good. It's so good that I rock 10 AP on my QB. Yeah, I go gunslinger. Um, and playmaker just because it's it's that strong <laughs> so big sack right there by joke and he's just 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 like he's so close he could sniff plus territory he's so close to being on joke side of the field he's going to go on ahead he's going to roll out throw over there to the left side big play because he does indeed get over the 50 yard line and i believe that was the first down if i'm not mistaken and no it's not third and one so, again, time is ticking down. Third and one. Looks like he's dialing up a pass here. Now, this is where I was talking about. He's on the 40-yard line, and he's going to roll out to the right. Nothing's open, and that right there is an incomplete pass. Now, this is where him having Tyler Bass, he takes the lead here. Tyler Bass can hit this with no problem from the 40-yard line. He doesn't have him. Now, because he doesn't have him, it's either punt the ball, which he's not going to do that. He's in that situation where he's too close to punt, but too far to kick a field goal. And I'm just thinking to myself, if the, the situations were reversed and Joke was on the 40 and 4th and 1, he goes on ahead and he takes the 3 and he gets ball back at the half. John Beast cannot kick the field goal from the 38 yard, I mean, for, excuse me, from the 40 yard line with Janikowski. So he's forced to go for it. Now, I mean, he's not forced, but he's going to go on ahead and go for it. Now, he definitely had someone open here. I forgot. Oh, the running back. The running back was going to be wide open on the table route. He decides to kind of force feed a, a quick little pass over there on the right side to his slot. And it's incomplete. Now, Joke gets really good field position starting at his own 40. Unfortunately, though, he doesn't have any timeout. So he would need a pretty big play for him to go on ahead and at least squeeze away three from here. But, again, mind you, he does have Tyler Bass, so he just needs to reach the 40. But with time ticking down, he's really unable to get anything going, and he's unable to go on ahead and muster up another drive. So going into the half, it's now a 3-3 three to three ball game. I feel like, you know, if he had the right equipment, John B. should be up 6-0. In my opinion, I mean 6-3. to three. He should be up 6-3. to three. Why he has Janikowski and not Bass, I'm not sure. Maybe he has Raider Chem going on. I don't know what the situation is, but... Um, that right there, I thought could potentially come back to hurt him. Felt like that was a big, big, big thing not to have. But nonetheless, Joke back again on defense. John Beast back again on offense as one of the biggest under, uh, like one of the biggest underdogs in the history of 
of MCS here. And, you know, you just got to take a look at the situation. You have this 18-year-old kid just starting to make a name for himself. Now, he beat some goons. He beat Joel. And Joel is an absolute monster. Joel is actually one of my favorite people on earth. Absolutely love Joel. He was able to beat Joel and win the club championship. Then he was able to beat K-Mac. Now he's facing jokes. So he's not just, you know, squeezing by no names. He's beating some of the world's best players. And he's making a name for himself. Next year, this time, we're going to look at John Beast and be like, oh, yeah, we definitely know about him. He's a monster. But this time going into it, it's like, you know, we know he's good. But can he handle one of the world's best? Can he is he is he really ready to take on someone of Joke's caliber? And so far he's holding his own. He's got himself a three to three tie here. And again, he's holding his own. You know, he's he's not not doing too bad. He's able to move the ball, pick up a few first downs and whatnot. Goes over there to the right side. Now that right there was a very very, very, very uh, tight throw, but he's able to go on ahead and pick up the first down, and he's just, he's doing something that is not easily done, and that's moving the ball against Joe. This entire tournament, well, I can't say entire tournament, he's only one game before this, but during the K-Mac game, he struggled on offense. He did not have the best offensive performance, and at the end of the game, he ended up shouting to himself, saying, I suck, I suck, I gotta get my offense going. So they asked questions, and they said, you know, um, where are you offensively? Like, are you happy going into the next game? Or is there some things? And he's just like, no, my offense is, I can't allow my offense to be where it's at. Like, if I'm going to win, I got to get my offense going. Like, my offense was a, a complete meltdown this game, and, and we got to pick it up. So, you know, he's definitely doing way more better consistent. Way more better? Is that even? <laughs> he's definitely doing a lot better, uh, you know, being more consistent on the offense side of the ball. Right here, thought about running. Then he, then he thought about stopping. Looked like he thought about taking off again. So right here, <coughs> big third down where it's third and nine, and he needs to then go on ahead and, you know, pick up the first down because, again, he, he wants big, he wants to force Joke to get touchdowns because Joke can go on ahead and get three with the best of them. Again, he keeps it on the ground. He's got very good vision, and he builds his team around the run. And, you know, he can definitely, he's more than capable of being able to, you know, get three. You want to get him in situations where you need seven. And unfortunately, he can't get there, but he takes the lead, right? And that's good. Put Joke in a situation where at least he has to work for it from here on out. You know, he can't go on ahead and just settle for, you know, flipping field position and punts. And at some point, he's going to have to start being aggressive because he needs points. So, you know, John Beast, I think, has... What, three drives and two scores? Or is it two scores and two? I don't know. I just know he's he's playing good. He's playing good. Now, he's not playing great, but he's playing good. You know, now great is like you're abnormal. You're just going off. You're, you're sexting in overtime, and you're just shooting three after three after three after three. You're making it, making it, making it, making it, making it. You know, but he's, he's playing good. He's playing very good against arguably the greatest Madden player to date. You know, which is joke. So, very first play, he's going to come out in a play action. He's going to roll out right here. Nothing really open. He's going to skedaddle for a few yards and uh, get back in the huddle and go back to his trips tight end here. So, uh, again, the pressure is definitely on joke. You're asking a defensive guru to now need to put points up offensively. So, in the very first game where he played JS the best, he went ahead in the very, very first play of the game. He got a strip sack fumble for seven. So that right there just put him in a driver's seat. From then on, he had the lead. And I believe J.S. the best even tied the game up where he was down 10-0 and scored. And it was 10-7. But for the most part, Joke was able to breeze through. You know, didn't really need to ask much of his offense. But here, he needs to he needs to put together some drives. He needs to go on ahead and get the ball going and, and you know, get in situations where he can go on ahead and score. And he's doing a pretty good job of running the ball. Now, one thing you will notice is that Joke isn't a go-on conservative kind of guy. He has Bo Jackson, and he wants to continuously get those falling forward animations, which you can do on conservative. Don't get me wrong. You definitely get those animations, but they are absolutely quadrupled with the amount of animations you get when you go from conservative to balance. You know, the fall forwarding, the falling forward animations are huge. <laughs> you get 
huge, huge, huge amounts of falling 40 animations when you're on balance. The problem is you are at risk of fumbling. But he likes to keep it on balance and he'll toggle it on, you know, uh, conservative whenever he feels like the situation calls for. So one thing that I noticed is that every single time he motions over, trips tight end, he does an audible down, he calls a pass play, he motions over from left to right, it's a pass play. One Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell Joe how to play. I already have a channel of me playing Joke early this year, and he beat the living hell out of me. <laughs> but one thing I would like to see, if I was in the room with him, is just have it look the same. You know, you've done that four times, and you've passed all four times. Do the same thing and call it inside zone just to have keep him on his toes. You know, have everything look the same, but, you know, be able to produce different style of plays. But, again, when you're talking to the world's greatest Madden player, you know, probably something like that doesn't mean that much to him. But just as a viewer, I'm just like, man, I would love to just see him motion over, do a bunch of hot routes, motion over, and call it inside zone. It's just every single time. You know, your defender is going to know it's coming because you have yet to do anything about it. And um, you've called a pass play every single time you've done it. But, again, Joke is in plus territory. He's got Tyler Bass, so he's already guaranteed three from here. Where right here, Janikowski might not be able to make this kick. Now, he can hit from the 38 in the wind. But if you're, like, at the far 38, because, you know, there's situations where, you know, it's second and one. And you run the ball. And you pick up, it says you you're, you get a full yard, but then it's, you know, third and inches where, you know, you, you're, that, that was a super long yard. So if you're at the back end of that 38, Janikowski could definitely doink off the crossbar and miss. But again, he has Tyler Bass. He's already in field goal range. He doesn't have anything to worry about. Third and 11, really quick play. He actually gets a broken tackle animation and he actually gains zero yards. <laughs> like zero. Like obviously... He wasn't close to a first down. He should have got tackled right then and there. It would have been a much easier of a field goal. But again, because he has Tyler Bass, he's able to go on ahead and kick this field goal with absolute ease, even a few yards to spare. And he's going to go on ahead and tie the game. Now, the pressure is back on John Beast. These are two situations where if you were to ask me before the game, if it's fourth quarter, jokes on defense, John Beast is on offense, who do you think feels more comfortable? I'm going to say joke on defense. This is what he does. <laughs> like he said, there's defense and then there's joke. He's just at a different level when it comes to defense. But that being said, this man, John Beast, <laughs> is doing a really good job. Now, he's not getting 40, 50-yard bombs down the field, but he's doing a very good job of steadily moving the ball against Joke, which is something that we really don't see often. And right there was such a smooth little swiggle. I don't know what that was. I don't know if he kept that in back pocket till then. But that smooth little swiggle had Joke like, are you kidding me? What was that? And right now we're taking a look at second down here. And again, these are, you know, this is where you, you want to be if you're Joke. John Beast, you'd much rather have the lead in this situation. <laughs> but right there, big play by Joke. And he is now a stop away from getting himself in position to potentially win the game. This is where you want to be. Now, John Beast has been just absolutely, when the situation calls for it, he's been dialing it up. He did it against K-Mac, and so far this game, and, and these situations where, you know, he was in, uh, you know, rough spots, he was able to come through and was able to muster up two field goals. So right here, rolls out to the left. He does a playmaker. But he gets a huge sack. Now that right there was a phenomenal stop by Joke. We are now looking at fourth down. He is going to not punt the ball. He is going to go for it. Now, there's a couple reasons why you can go for it. One, obviously if you get the first down, you get to continue the drive. If you stall out and you do not get this first down, you're guaranteeing Joke to take the lead. But you're guaranteeing yourself to at least get the ball back because the the, the field is going to be minimal, right? He's at the 27-yard the line. He can't clock out three minutes. It's just, there's just no way. So, it, you know, that's kind of like the silver lining of going for it here. If you fail, he can't really clock you out. He gets a huge, huge, huge shed right there. He gets a stop, and now Joke is already in, in, in a situation. He's guaranteed the lead. 
but he is screaming, I get seven, this game is over. You take a look at John Beast's face, and it just self-esteem goes down. You start questioning, why did I do that? Now I'm, uh, he's guaranteed the lead. Right? He's guaranteed the lead no matter what. And now you're thinking, if you be just holding the three here, we should be okay. We just have to hold him to three. Now right here was a very, very, very big play of the game. He went out of bounds. He goes out of bounds, and he stops the clock. He could have easily stayed in bounds and wasted another 30 seconds off the clock. But he stays in bounds, and he allows the clock to stop. He's going to audible down. He's going to run the ball. He swiggles inside, and just like that, Joke takes the lead, and he is now up seven, and you are asking a fairly new player to come up and play the defending champion, the, the, the world's greatest Madden player, arguably. You're asking yourself to get seven points against Joke in one drive. Because he's not going to have two at max. But outside of that, it's really just one drive. The only way he gets two drives out of this is if he gives the ball back to Joke extremely quick. So now you have to go on ahead and calm yourself down. Try to relax yourself to now move the ball 75 yards against arguably the best defensive player in the game. Starts off pretty good. He's going to take off. Nothing was open again. You know, Joke doing a terrific job bracketing that Deion Sanders, which is not easy to do because Playmaker is, it's so good. Like, it's it's hell. It really is. And he's doing a pretty good job of being able to limit Deion from really eating with the Playmaker. <coughs> Excuse me. So right here. He's going to kind of roll to the right a little bit. He's going to take off with his QB again. He's going to get down. Third down right here. He's going to go on ahead. No huddle. Get back up in his shotgun bunch. Third and three. Joke just needs one stop. And this game is over. He's going to go on ahead and take it to the two-minute warning. So now pressure is obviously all on John B. side, right? Like, yeah, there's some pressure on Joke to get the stop. But, you know, you could definitely... He, for sure know that the tension is way more heavily on B side. He's losing. He's, you know, pretty much going to be in fourth down territory from here on out. And uh, he needs to go on ahead and get something going. He needs to get it going now. He's going to motion over the crosser. Gets by the one step ahead. He has them deep downfield. And what a beautiful play. Now, Joke does run three one step ahead. But crossers absolutely torch it. He's going to go on ahead and run a crosser and get a very big play and get him, you know, close to, is he beyond the 50-yard line? Uh, me looking at the screen is very, is, is small. So yeah, now I see he's on Joke's 41-yard line. So um, second and 10 right here after a huge play, huge, huge, huge play. He's going to go on ahead. He's going to roll out to the left side here, and he attacks the same side of the field, and he gets a huge play. Now this is where things decide to get very, very interesting. Now, top, clock is ticking. This is 100% fourth down territory right here. He's going to roll out to the right side. He's going to attempt to run. I'm not too sure about that play call. Uh, that's kind of like a maybe I'll catch him off guard kind of play. And if it works out, that's great. If he gets the first down, gets out of bounds, it's great. But he just didn't. He got tackled right away, and it's just unfortunate where he ends up losing yards. So right here, clock is ticking. 40 seconds remaining. He's rolling out to the left side. He goes to the end zone, and it possibly could have been picked off. You can make an argument that it should have been picked off. Wasn't the best read by John Beast. He's looking. He's rethinking what it is that I got to do. That play right there, throw it out the window. That wasn't it. Big third down right here, because obviously if he doesn't get the first down, he's going to win. Now, he doesn't need to score here, you know, but he needs to get at least – a first down to continue the drive if he gets stopped here. So he's going to roll out immediately like a bootleg to the right, and he catches it, but he's unable to get two feet in bounds. Now this is where Joke tweets out that he made a mistake. He says he picked his playbook 
Because on fourth down, on fourth and crucial situations, his defense, his go-to defense was going to be 1-4-6. That is what he had tucked in his back pocket the entire time was in a crucial situation, 1-4-6. Now, that timeout was huge. Because if John Beast does not get the first down, he cannot get the ball back. If he had all three timeouts... Joke ran the ball three times. He possibly could have got the ball back. But now it doesn't matter. It's it's all or bust right here. And you take a look at what he has. He has a post on the left side. A corner route, excuse me, on the left side. He's going to roll out. He hits the post wide open. And John Beast goes insane. Oh, I can say post. The corner route hits the bottom left pylon. And gets open, and he is able to tie the game. Now, in this situation, you would like to think Joke's got to take this game to overtime, right? He has to take this game to overtime. He's the veteran. He's more, he's gonna, he should be way more relaxed than John Beast. That was a hell of a drive by him, but can he do it again? All right, he got it. He did it. Hell of a drive. Hell of a drive. Masterful drive. Work of art. 75 yards. Can he do it again? You need to put him in that situation. Joker's going to go on ahead, run the ball, get a pretty good gain of about eight. He's going to go on ahead and call a timeout. And we are seconds away from entering overtime where you are asking an 18-year-old kid to go up and dethrone the world's best Madden player, arguably, the defending champion in overtime. But Joke says he he's trying to avoid overtime. He's going to chuck it up, hold wide, hope for the best, incomplete pass. That right there was obviously not a good read. You're just hoping for some wild animation to bail you out. So at that point, you're thinking, Joke's just going to punt the ball here, right? He's going to run the ball, punt the ball. John Beast has one play. We're going overtime. He, nope, Joke is doing it again. He's going to pass the ball again. He hikes the ball. He chucks it over the middle of the field. It's an interception. Nobody's within 20 yards. John Beast runs to the 38, and he falls down. On one of the greatest plays in MCS history, for him to have the knowledge, for him to have the self-awareness to fall down and save that extra second, not only that, at the 38-yard line, he's at Janikowski's max. If he fell down 12 inches before he did, he's unable to make this kick. Game-winning field goal, iced to dethrone the previous Madden belt winner, John Beast gets the job done, and he wins. And he cements himself in history as the world's biggest MCS era Madden upset in history. One of the world's greatest Madden games one of the world's biggest upsets in esports. Unbelievable. An 18 year old kid from Connecticut just beat the defending champion 16 to 13. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What an incredible play! By John Beast. Unfortunately, it just wasn't a great play by Joke. Would have loved to have just seen him going to overtime. I really feel like in that setting, Joke is the favorite in sudden death. But he he just made not so good of a play. And John Beast took advantage. But again, for him to have not too many people have the awareness to get in field goal range and get down precisely where you need to. That blows my mind. 
is the fact that he went down at the 38 precisely. You can't teach things like that. We may have ourselves a legend in the making. We may just be witnessing the start of an absolute legend. And the start to this absolute legend started with him making the biggest upset in Madden MCS era history. What an absolute hell of a game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. It's your boy GS. We're going to go on ahead of signing out. Just an absolute hail of a game that was. I'm just, I, I, watching it now, I'm still, whoo, I seen it live. And I rewatched it, commentated 41 minutes post-commentary. And wow, hats off to you, John Beast. You are a legend in the making. Appreciate the love and support, man. It's your boy GS. Until next time. What a game. Peace. What a game.